Hey guys, this is Cyrus and it's been a little while since I've made a video. I am on the way to Mexico right now to get a dentist appointment. And uh, <laughs> this is actually a place I've never been to in all my years in Arizona, which is called Nogales. People around me are warning me, hey, it's kind of sketchy there these days after the pandemic. There's been a lot of crime. Uh, sometimes the border is open, sometimes it's not. And uh, to watch yourself, I'm not that frightened about it frankly seems to be a little bit of an overreaction i'm just gonna head over there and uh maybe take a look around mexico while i'm at it in case you ever want to know what it looked like driving to mexico this is about it at least coming out of arizona a lot of grass a lot of shrubs a lot of cactus a lot of mountains we're technically in the town of saharita which that's about what it looks like. This part of Arizona is most known for mining. As you can see, there's a lot of mountains. There's a lot of copper mining. There's, uh, I think, aluminum mining. The people who live out here, uh, a lot of people come here for work. It's kind of missing the amenities you'd expect when so many people and their families live out here. Like, where are the shopping malls and where's the stuff to do? So, kind of boring out here, at least until somebody begins developing these areas. But the nature is very beautiful out here. It's not something I've explored very much of in my years in Arizona. This kind of southern tip, and I certainly would like to in the future, especially once it cools down again, since we are entering into summer, which is uh, the worst time to do many outdoor things. One way you can tell that you're getting closer to Mexico is the signs begin changing from miles to the metric system. Obviously I've been all around the world and the metric system is what I'm used to. A lot of people don't get it, but it's basically divisible by 10. So. For example, one kilometer is a thousand meters and so forth, and it just makes a lot more sense. So this is one of the only places really you'll be driving in the USA and beyond the metric system is when you get within about 70 or 80 kilometers of Mexico. All right, I've made it. I'm now in Nogales, Arizona. So this is kind of a tale of two cities because half the city is in the USA, half the city is in Mexico. I've never actually been here before and uh, presumably this is a public parking place I can pay at. I don't know where the heck I'm supposed to go to pay. Let's look around. Okay, so we got the fabulous Burger King parking service and so I put this on my dashboard and make sure that I'm in the right place because if I'm not they will tell me okay I see other people with these in this location so I feel I feel good about it so there we go get the hat some water and uh, I guess we're on our way as you can see, there is a lot of parking around here, but I just feel safer with my car at Burger King. Just knowing that Burger King has entrusted my car, I think really helps. To do this the smart way, even though I'm only going to be there a couple of hours, probably want to get insurance. But for now, Let's just hope that the Mexican dentist doesn't hit an artery. Okay, let's see how easy this process is going to be. Coming in shouldn't be that big of a deal, in my opinion. But you never know these days. The world's been on fire. Maybe it'll be easy, maybe it'll be a hassle. My appointment's in half an hour. Let's see what happens.
So that was really funniest experience because I've been all over the world, as you know, and I've never been to a border crossing point between two countries where they didn't even check my passport, they didn't check my ID or anything. I guess it doesn't matter if we're coming from USA into Mexico. I mean, it's not exactly like an immigration issue of Americans smuggling themselves into Mexico, although sometimes uh, it doesn't seem like such a bad idea to me. As you can see, as soon as we enter, you have a lot of pharmacies, dentists, in fact, just dentists everywhere. Uh, my dentist is down this way a little bit. Why do so many people come here? Because it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot of hotels, a lot of stuff to do, a lot of restaurants, and maybe we'll check some of this stuff out unless I'm in severe pain after I get out of the dentist. The dentist is right around the corner here on Pearson Street. And it uh, looks like I also found a hot bit of restaurants. We have Mr. Taco. It should be Senior Taco, but whatever. Mariscos and Greco. I don't know what this is. It looks like it. maybe a restaurant. And... Ah, of course. We would not be in Nogales without going to Dubai High Energy Nightclub which is much better than a low energy nightclub. Definitely want to pick the high energy version of a nightclub. Hell, I'd be happy to go to any nightclub. It's been like a year and a half. And now we have made it to my dentist. There's only a few certainties in life, death, taxes, uh, the afterlife, dentists, and here we are. So please wish me some luck. Uh, I haven't even been to the dentist since the pandemic began and <laughs> I probably have a few issues so uh, God willing I'll get out of here in an hour or two and be on my way but let's just let's just see what happens well I've left a dentist and I actually feel happy that doesn't usually happen when I leave dentists but uh, I have a clean bill of health no issues and I kind of dodged a bullet because I hadn't been to a dentist since before the pandemic and um, I had COVID possibly twice. I have the long haul version of it. So even today, most days I feel freaking uh, fatigued and all kinds of issues. And a lot of people who have had COVID have had serious dental problems because the mouth is full of those ACE receptors. And I've had many dental pains, all types of weird things since I um, had the infection. So I was expecting all kinds of problems in my mouth. And it turns out my mouth is uh, pretty close to perfect. And that really is a excuse to celebrate. So let's go find somewhere to do that. If I'm gonna be in a strange border town in Mexico, like I'm not gonna eat sushi. Pretty much seems like the worst possible idea. Yeah, same with Subway. I just don't think it's a good idea to go to a border town and go to Subway restaurant. I just, I don't understand it, but yeah, maybe, uh, maybe locals like it, but get away from bad American food. I mean, why go there? There's definitely a lot of totes and uh, people aggressively trying to sell things, just, just like I think any touristy location near the border. Uh, but I do get the feeling I have to be a little bit cautious here and uh, I shouldn't keep my phone out in the open too close to the road like I'm doing right now. So I'm looking for uh, a particular restaurant that I guess it's one of the best ones in town called La Roca. I think it's this way. So let's go check that out. The restaurant I'm looking for is somewhere this way, but there's actually a train blocking my path. And I don't think I'm going to shimmy under the train. So let's go down this way, see if there's an opening. Well, it looks like that train is never going to move, and so they thankfully have a uh, nice big overpass here that will get me across to that other side of the city. So let's go give it a shot. I'll give you a little expert travel tip. If you want to avoid totes and scammers, run, jog, be in a hurry. Uh, this will almost always um, keep them away.
Okay, we found it. La Roca El Balcon Bar and Restaurant. Uh, let's see if it's open. Okay, we're at the main entrance, and to be honest with you, it looks kind of looks closed, doesn't it? Yeah. Strange. Well, I guess so much for going here. Well, I might have to backtrack all the way back to a couple of restaurants I found back near my dentist. So, all right. Back to the overpass, back to the border crossing. Let's go. Definitely see some good looking places to eat. We have Maria Bonita restaurant, La Hacienda del Caballo Rojo restaurant, but it kind of looks like there's nobody in there. Um, restaurant Olivia. So I'm not so sure which one to pick. Uh, I like the outside of this one. Maria Bonita seems to be open and lively, so maybe let's check this one out. Well, it has mole, enchiladas, ceviche, pretty much all I need to know. <laughs> seems like a good pick. There's just something about places like this, man. I mean, the salsa doesn't look like anything that special, but actually it just tastes amazing. Well, and here we are, my friends. Chicken mole with pretty much everything <laughs> in addition to it, wow. If I eat like this all the time, I will become very roly-poly. But hey, once in a while, why not? Mole is a Mexican chocolate dish and it's always my favorite. The only other time I've been to Mexico was in 2018 when I went to Puerto Vallarta and I made mole a big part of that trip and um, I don't think I've had any mole since then so I'm very happy to, to uh, have some now. Yeah, very strong, very uh, strong mole flavor. So this place is pretty much just pharmacy after pharmacy after pharmacy and dental clinics and more pharmacies and uh, let's see what else. Oh look another dental clinic. Maybe if I go down here we'll see another pharmacy but hey you know it's not a bad idea. We all know how prescription drug costs are in the USA. If you happen to live in Arizona you might save a lot of money by going to one of these pharmacies. Or also one of these dentists like I did today. The touts are a little bit aggressive. Just keep in mind what I said before. You know, like when I'm uh, when I'm trying to avoid touts, I sprint, I jog. They see them in a hurry, they will leave you alone. But if you're like this, you're wandering around, bumbling around like a stupid tourist, taking videos of things, and yeah, you're going to be harassed a lot. You should always keep a, keep a conscious awareness of your belongings, what's in your pockets, and you know, just, just be mindful. Just basic stuff. In all the countries I've been to, I've never really had too many problems, but you just gotta always follow those rules. Well, I think I've had a nice look around Nogales. I'm sure I'll be back soon enough. Heck, we haven't even gotten to the uh, Nogales nightlife. So that will be next time. So let's start walking back to the border, which is going to be this way. Obviously getting out is going to be, I think, a little bit more challenging than getting in. I'm not even sure which direction or which side of the street I'm supposed to be on to get out on foot. But let's find out. Okay, that was the wrong way. I think I saw a queue of people on foot on this side, so I'm going to walk that way, see if that's how I get out. I really don't know where the hell I'm going. Uh, USA, I think I found it. Well, and just like that, I'm back in the States, and uh, well, it was a lot sketchier getting out of uh, Nogales, Mexico than it was getting in. Uh, they did check my passport and they asked me a lot of questions about like, what were you doing there? Uh, 
why don't you have anything with you? Because I wasn't shopping, I went to the dentist. Did you bring back any medications from the dentist? Where do you live? Were you born in Tucson? Uh, how long have you been living in Tucson? Like, what am I, uh, is this a forged passport or something? And am I, uh, am I trying to sneak in? I don't, a bit silly, you know? But nonetheless, I'm, you know, out of there and need to find my Burger King. So, as I said, it is a tale of two cities. We have one half of the city back there in Mexico. The other half is here in uh, the USA. Obviously, the first big difference you feel is that one, there's, a, no, there's no one here. There's no touts. Uh, but, you know, it still looks pretty similar, doesn't it? Yeah, I think one place that hasn't been explored very much is just Nogales on the American side because people always think about Nogales going into Mexico. But who knows what, what might be on the, uh, on, on the American side of the border because, you know, I mean, people don't really have a reason to come here. Oh, wait, is that my Burger King up there? I think it is. Who knew that you could see the Great Wall of China from here? Well then, so Burger King took care of my car. I made it out. I'm going to hit the road again, get back to Tucson. What did we learn on this trip? Um, well, we learned that the dental care is pretty good in Nogales. Uh, I would recommend it. The food was good, but I feel like that mole, chicken mole, really needed like some cilantro or something. But besides that, that was good. Nice to leave the country again a little bit, if only briefly, to show that uh, Cyrus the Explorer is still in business. Uh, I haven't allowed viruses or pandemics to beat me. I will come back to life. And what else? Um, well, we learned that things are getting back to normal. And it wasn't as bad here as people told me it was. Uh, I didn't see like rampant crime or problems. It was a little sketchy getting back into the USA, but I think that happens a lot. And uh, it would be fun to come back. Although I think I'm going to go to somewhere a little bit more exotic coming up around the corner. Maybe somewhere like, I don't know, Oaxaca, Mexico. Something like that, once I reactivate myself a bit more. That said, it's time to hit the road. An hour, 20 minutes back home to Tucson. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed the content, or leave a comment down below about what you thought. Until next time, this is Cyrus the Explorer.